YouTube kick. Hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Get that out of the way. Okay. So let's talk about um, um, these red pill um, podcasts. And honestly, why well, I'm getting kind of tired of them. So you have the whatever podcast, right? And then you got, and then you had, what's her name? Pearly things. I understand these videos blow up and everything, but I just think at this point, um, I don't know, man, I'm just worn out on them. Like it's only so many times I can go, Oh, look at this bimbo girl. She wants a guy who makes a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars a year. She's stupid. It's like, okay. Like, I'm not seeing enough podcasts anymore. And men still do it, but I'm seeing less podcasts about men talking about men. I can understand. We could spend the rest of our lives talking about what women do wrong and women have high standards. And, but at some point, I just feel like us men have stopped talking to each other about accountability. I mean, we're assuming that every man is worthy of a woman. And I, let me say this. What I mean is every time I see one of these red pill podcasts, stupid clips, it's just like it, it's... It's, it's like they're talking as if every man looks as handsome as they do. And it's just not true. And that every man is financially um, above average like they are. And we're not. The majority of us men are like myself. We're average men earning average money trying to make ends meet. We can't even... If we just want to go buy something nice, that's going to set us back. You know? I saved up a lot of money. And guess what I had to do with that money? I had to go fix my cars. I had a lot of money saved up and then bam, my cars both broke down, had to fix both of them. It's a setback because I'm an average guy. Those kind of setbacks hurt because it takes a long time to accumulate a ton of money and save it. That's what people don't understand. They think I know people are like, by 35, you should have $55,000 saved up. Okay. The average person doesn't have the average knowledge, to, the exceptional knowledge to do those things. We're going to do the same things you did in your twenties, you know, party, try to get a girl and screw up. Okay, it'd be nice to think, oh, well, I could just do this. And no, some of us just go off and we have different environments. We grow up with different parents and we just go off and do our own thing sometimes. So it'd be nice to say, oh, man, you know, I'm just going to budget. I'm going to chill. I'm going to go to the gym at 430 in the morning. But most people are going to do that, you know. And so I just get tired of the red pill talks because it's like, man, I'm kind of tired of talking about women so much. First of all, most of us average guys, like I said, once again, we're going to get average women. And if you, and this is where people get the internet twisted. Okay. If you do on that online dating, yes, it is probably just like you see on the internet. But if you're really out here in the real world, women don't act like what you see in these red pill things. Remember those are women who are coming onto a podcast who know they're going to be seen by millions of people possibly. So they're obviously going to act different and talk different in front of a camera. And they may believe what they're saying is true. But if you really out here on the streets, and I know some people are against that. They're like, you know, screw dating. It's too hard. And I agree. I understand that dating is extremely hard. But it's, it's even if, even before, let's say we didn't have Tinder, TikTok, and all that anymore. It was still hard to get a girlfriend. It's still hard then. I was dating before Tinder came out. It was still difficult. It wasn't like, oh man, now that Tinder's out, man, it's just exceptionally hard. I think if you, you're just going to have to, you have to make a change. It's just how it's going to be. If you really want a wife or a husband to live the rest of your days out with, sometimes you're going to have to save us some money and move. Men, sometimes you're going to have to go get a better job that makes better money, you know, so, or, you know, you have to get a girl who's willing to get with you at your very lowest or whatever that is. Um, but you're going to, maybe you, sometimes you're going to have to move to a city. You're going to have to move to a bigger city. You're going to have to not work from home. You're going to have to go, go to work to see people. But nobody wants to do that. And so obviously dating is getting harder because people are trying to switch to online dating. But if you get out here in the real world, most women I meet, they're willing to. I'm telling you, I've seen some. I'm not going to say I've seen. I've seen some really. Obviously, we've all seen very gorgeous women and very beautiful women. But most women look average, just like most men look average. But I want to say this. Um. As a guy, and I've see, I see a lot of women with their boyfriends and husbands because I work with all women. And I see their husbands and I see their uh, boyfriends. I'm telling you, these men are not exceptional looking men. Some of them are fat like me. Some of them are bearded up. Some of them just look short. Some of them are goofy looking. 
I mean, to think that it's, it's really this reality where you think that every average girl is getting with this top dollar guy, it's just not true. Most women are going to get with a man that's within their range. Most women aren't trying to go for the very top. Now, I know the statistics will say that, but like I said, once again, that's with online dating. I'm talking about if you live in a town, an actual city and a place, you can, women are gonna go for guys who they know that they can meet on the same level. Guys are gonna do the same. I just don't meet a whole lot of women who get with a whole lot of good looking guys. They don't. <laughs> These really exceptional looking men, they don't. Those are, and, those are, and when you see a woman with an exceptional looking guy, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, if I ever see that, I don't think anything about it. It's just whatever. But to me, it's just it's just the red pill community makes it seem like that's the it's the norm for a girl who looks like a girl in Miami to it's all the women around us. Most of the women don't look like the girls from Miami. Most of the girls we see aren't only fan models. They're just normal, everyday, chubby looking women. Some of them are in shape, but most of them aren't just like most men aren't in shape. It's just, it's the same thing. So that's the reason I'm kind of over the red pill, not red pill talk. I'm over the, the podcast that do the whole, oh, let's make these women look stupid. Now, not to say that some of those podcasts are trying to have real conversations. And I understand those videos aren't as popular, but I don't care. I think we should just move away from it and see what happens and just revisit it here and there. It doesn't have to be an everyday thing. Um, and I think, like I said, most of these, I think some of these companies are switching out. They're doing a horrible job, but they're switching out. Um, but that just goes to show you that some people don't know anything outside of what they've heard about women being this and that. They don't understand life experience. They can't come out here and talk, have a real conversation about other stuff besides that. Um, but once again, they'll learn. I think they'll get better. Um, hopefully pearly things. And <laughs> she's... I hope Pearly things can um, put it together. I believe in her. Um, she just got off. She's um, she's kind of lost sight of what she was trying to do. Um, she found an opportunity to make some money and she did it. I, uh, from what I heard, she's not a nice person. Um, but everybody is able to change, so I'm hoping she's able to change. Same thing with the Whatever podcast. I'm hoping they change and maybe make some different changes in their stuff. Um, and hopefully we'll see some improvement, but I'm over it. Uh, let me know if you're over it. Are you tired of talking about bashing women? Because even as a man who's been rejected by tons of women, I'm over it. I'm over talking about women like this, especially now. I was working with a ton of women before, but now I work at a job where I work with all women. And the more I talk to them, the more I don't hate them like they want me to. It's like the red pill community sometimes gets you into that. Oh, I hate women because they won't date me or because they want this or their things are standing. Men have high standards too. You got a bunch of goofy men out here who are content creators who think that if they do stupid pranks or do these exceptional pranks or mess with people that they're going to blow up and be famous. And most of them are never going to be famous because fame is not a normal thing. If everybody can be famous, then we'd all be famous. I and mean, if everybody's famous, then nobody's famous. So you got goofy men out here doing the same thing with these exceptionally high standards that are ridiculous. I'm being included. At one point in my life, I thought I was going to make, and I'm not ashamed to say it, at one point in my life, I thought I was, by the time I was either 35 or 40, I can't remember, I, I wrote a vision board, but at 35 or 40, I thought I was going to be a multi-millionaire. And I thought by the age of 40, I think, that I would own six subways and I would have $35.6 million on my bank account. You understand how delusional that sounds? Now, I didn't think that then, but I think it now. Because I got caught up in the dumb hype. That all you see all these other men talk about, like, if you just believe, this is how you make six figures and not be a loser. And blah, blah, blah. And if you just believe it, the money will come to you. It was the whole thing when the whole uh, manifest thing was so big. The secret, all that kind of stuff was huge. Um, but I'm over it now. I don't think there's nothing. When you talk about manifestation, you just got to be careful because manifestation is saying that you yourself can create a situation that doesn't truly exist. It is a, what people call manifestation, the true, what it really is, is just getting a certain job or a certain this, getting this skill set, making this kind of money. That's not manifesting. That's work. <laughs> it's not a manifestation if you're working for it. 
Like some, I manifested to be on a Steve Harvey show. Yeah, but didn't you work for it? Didn't you reach out to Steve Harvey? Didn't you do this, do that, do this, do this, do that? It's not necessarily a manifestation. You put the blocks in place for it to get there. Other people will say the same thing you did, but they didn't get to the Steve Harvey show, even though they believed it with all their heart. They didn't put it in the work. And even sometimes, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get out of here. Even if you put it in the work sometimes, you still might not make it. That's okay. You can't get everything in this life. And everybody wants to have their cake and eat it too. They want every situation to work out for them perfectly. But it won't. You know how much I want to meet the owner of Luca Glass or meet the owner of Pulsar and talk with him and hey, hey, man, I mean, you think I could get a few glass pieces and maybe we could work together and in five years from now, guys, I'm making six figures. You don't think I want that? But in reality, is I'm gonna I'm gonna have to put in that I'm not even gonna lie. I think I'd have to put in a thousand a thousand hours of content before I ever got to that place. Cause I may never grab, I may never ever gain another sub on my smoke channel. I may never gain another sub. Those numbers may dwindle until it gets down to zero. That's probably not gonna happen, but that's the way I think. And my thing is, do I care? If all my subs went down to zero and I had nobody watching, could I still do this? Yes, I could. You know how I know that? Because I did it for years. When I first started YouTube, I didn't have no followers. I had 10 subs for the first year I did YouTube. I had 10 subs. I got, to, I, don't th I think I got to 30, 30 subs like a year later. I think I was on YouTube two, two years before I even got to 30 subs, but I didn't care. I was making these videos before YouTube existed. Y'all would never see those videos, but I used to make videos all the time. I made videos on Instagram, Facebook. I have been making videos since I was young and there was no YouTube. There was nothing. I just made videos for fun and that's what I still do. But that doesn't mean I, I don't want to have success in this. But I also understand that sometimes it's not about hard work. Sometimes it's about who you know. And I don't know that person. And it's cool. I'm okay with that. Okay? So I just said all that I had to say this. Um, I'm over the red pill community as it stands. I'm not against people who are red pilled. I'm against what they turned it into. And not the people who originally started. But the people who took it over to make a money grab. Those people screwed it up. And they make it so hard to watch anymore. But we'll see.